Hello, my friends. Welcome to the big picture. It's the beginning of another week. That means we have opportunity to prepare once again to share God's word. This quarter, we're following the theme in the crucible with Christ. This week, our study goes by the title, Seeing the Goldsmith's Faith. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come to you now. We want to say thank you for promising to always be with us. I just pray that you might be with us as we open your word, as we share together. We pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. It's one of those things that I've been asked to do many times. With monotonous regularity, I've been asked to write a reference for a newly graduated student or for a a person wishing to immigrate or for someone about to sit down with a new employer. On most occasions, it's been a, a very real pleasure. Thinking of positive character traits has hardly been a burden. Once or twice, however, I really struggled between the need to say something and the devastating impact that a genuinely honest reflection might bring. I'm all too conscious of the damage a poor character reference could do to the individual's potential school admission or desired employment. Once or twice, I have to admit, I've chosen to decline providing a reference. I tell the individual that I really don't know them well enough and that perhaps it would be better for them to approach another pastor. I'm only too conscious of how important character has traditionally been to employers, to school admission boards and to the whole community. As you start this week's study, why not commence by chatting in your fellowship group about the character references required for your employment. Perhaps you could ask this question. How significant is character in your chosen occupation? If you have ever been part of an interview panel, how much weight was put on character as opposed to things like technical qualifications, industry experience and academic training? Do you think character still carries the weight that it did in previous generations. In our study this week, uh, we'll be digging into the matter of Christian character and consider what's involved in its refinement. Yes, I suggest this has some very challenging aspects, but let's look at how our study presents the study this week. As we commence our study on Sunday, uh, we're brought to the key text for the day, This passage speaks of the believer being conformed to the image or the character of the Son. This is one of the Bible's great promises. It says this, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. This is an amazing thought. God is batting for humanity. His deepest desire is to restore in humanity all that was lost at the time of the fall. In short, God's desire is that having accepted Christ, the believer will function in thought and deed like Christ. At this point, our study guide then provides a quote. It's about character that may be regarded as somewhat controversial. This is what it says. The very image of God is to be reproduced in humanity. The honour of God, the honour of Christ, is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. Now, on first reading, I'm really conscious that some will see this as a contentious statement. It certainly has overtones of a problematical, a theological belief called perfectionism. It's worth asking. How are we to regard this statement? In response, I would plead with you to not read more into this statement than what the original author intended. Without a doubt, 
perfectionism is one of the most discouraging religious beliefs one could imagine. In my experience, I've seen saints who are walking very close to the Lord lose the entire peace of the gospel after adopting perfectionistic belief. Unfortunately, even these individuals come to see themselves as absolute spiritual failures. My friends, this is not what God intends. The good news, however, is that the context of this statement in Desire of Ages, it's actually page 671, it takes us far from perfectionism. The statement is in the middle of a wonderful chapter entitled, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. Entire pages surrounding this statement are speaking about the coming of the Holy Spirit in, in the preceding paragraph. Ellen White says this, Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead. It's the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. It's by the spirit that the heart is made pure through the spirit that the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Now, this context, I believe, is something that really complements the original quote. But why not spend some time chatting about the original statement and its context? Perhaps you may like to ask these questions. Why is belief in character, perfection, so dangerous? How does victory in the battle with sin differ from perfectionism? Would you agree that sin can be resisted and overcome only through the moving of the Holy Spirit? If in fact this is the case, why do so many Christians see failure in their daily experience? As we come to Monday's reflection, we encounter a study entitled Faith Amid the Refining Fire. In this study, we're called to consider the place of trials in refining and building the character. We look at the example of Job. In this regard, our Bible study guide makes this comment. Hard as it is to understand, God can use these trials to refine and purify you and bring out his image in your character. Now, once again, I would plead with you to not read more into this statement than is warranted. How easy it would be for the person with a chronic disease to say, does this mean that God is more interested in refining me than he is a healthy person? Of course, such a suggestion would be absolutely ludicrous. Having said that, however, many ministers would acknowledge that those who face sickness and trials are often the very ones who draw closest to their master. These are the ones who in weakness have learnt the source of strength and in poverty discovered riches that far exceed anything that earth could provide. Perhaps you could chat about this. Perhaps you could ask these questions. Why is it important that we not blame God for all the pain, the suffering, the trials that believers face? What are the alternative causative factors of chronic disease and intense trials? Would you agree that believers who face sickness and trials are often the ones who draw closest to their master? Why do you think this is? As we come to Tuesday, we're called to consider Christ's parable to the wise and the foolish virgins and also the illustration of Christ's end time separation of the sheep from the goats. And the second of these two parables, the character of those who wish to enter the kingdom is central. In short, there is a marked difference between the character of the sheep and the goats. On Wednesday, we're called to consider the character of those who are waiting for the second coming of Christ. The passage we're called to consider is found in Daniel 12, 1 to 10. This passage refers to our era. This is what it says. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked will do wickedly. But none of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. 
Apparently, just as employers, courts and educational institutions have tradition, traditionally valued character, so our God continues to value character. Most significantly, however, I'd suggest that while education, experience, suffering and trials are all life transforming agents, the ultimate character creator is the mind-altering, heart-changing power of the Holy Spirit. Only then can the believer truly reflect the goldsmith's face. Thank you so much for joining with us. If you'd like to contact us, we can be contacted at the address on your screen. If you'd like us to add you, to our priority list and would like me to send big picture directly to your smartphone or email address each week, we're happy to do just that. Just send your details to the contact point on your screen. May the Lord richly bless you as you continue to struggle with all that scripture has to share. Thank you so much for joining with us.